To present our next Carnegie Medal, please welcome a man who, in addition to his day job as counselor at the Federal Department of Justice in Bern, Switzerland, has also served for 34 years as executive director of the Carnegie Rescuers Foundation in Switzerland, Hans Rudi Hubscher. And to introduce and to present to the Crown family, we have on hand someone who needs no introduction to a New York audience, whether it is real estate, the arts, education, sports, or foreign affairs, he's there. As chairman and co-chief executive of Tishman Spire, he founded and now runs one of the leading owners, developers, operators, and managers of real estate in the world. He serves as chairman of the board of trustees of New York's Museum of Modern Art, and he is the vice chair of New York's Presbyterian Hospital, and I'm told that is only what he does on Mondays. Please welcome Jerry Spire. I'm pleased and honored to be at this occasion to acknowledge and celebrate such remarkable and generous families. The crowns are remarkable in many, many different ways. But a little background first. A solid and long business relationship has many attributes of a good marriage. The parties have to respect each other. They must communicate openly and honestly they need to be mutually supportive, especially when times are tough or difficult. And finally, it doesn't hurt if they like each other as human beings. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of knowing four generations of crowns as my partners and good friends for 44 years. I have worked with four generations of the Crown family, including Lester's dad, the Colonel. I consider myself very fortunate to have had the opportunity to have known him just a bit in his later years. He was an extraordinary man in so many different ways. Lester and his sons, Jim and Steve, and his cousin, Corky Goodman, are close friends and colleagues. Through this multi-generational partnership and friendship, I have come to know and love Renee, the dynamic matriarch of the clan, and the rest of the Crown family as well. Unfortunately, there are just too many to name here today, given my two-minute limit. The family has taught me so much by exemplifying how a successful and meaningful life should be lived. They are a family dedicated to community, country, and philanthropy, and have perfected the art of giving back. They epitomize the most wise among us who accept the notion, from those to whom much is given, much is expected. And they meet those expectations in an elegant and understated manner on a daily basis. I am pleased to be here, and I have to say, it's a unique honor to talk about the Crowns today, as the Crowns have made a positive difference in people's lives. The Carnegie Award acknowledges how grateful we all are for their contributions to society. Congratulations, Lester. Now it's my distinct pleasure to read the citation to the Crown family. We honor you, the Crown family, for your exceptional philanthropic achievements over the course of 75 years. Your family embodies the time-honored values of hard work in helping the less fortunate. Part 
of an admirable and enduring inheritance. Like Andrew Carnegie, your forebearers, Harry and Ida Crown, came to this country in the 19th century in search of a better life. They were among the masses who immigrated from Eastern Europe to Chicago. They raised their children in poverty, but gave them the considerable blessings of a secure family life steeped in Jewish traditions. Lester Crown, when Andrew Carnegie said, from the ranks of the poor, so many strong, eminent, self-reliant men have always sprung and always must spring, he might well have been referring to those children, particularly your father, Henry, a believer in character, friendship, honor, and integrity, Henry Crown insisted that in America, anything was possible if you were willing to work for it. Demonstrating remarkable talent and ingenuity, along with a tremendous work ethic, Henry and his brothers launched the Material Service Corporation in 1919, which survived the Great Depression to become one of the most successful enterprises in America. You, Lester, have followed in your father's footsteps. Beginning in 1947, your family has annually dedicated significant resources to philanthropy. In gratitude for opportunities only possible in the United States, you have given back abundantly to community and to country. You have increased your philanthropy in pace with your family's continued success, supporting numerous national and international organizations. Your generosity has extended to the arts, civic affairs, education, environmental projects, health, human services, and Jewish causes. From numerous basic research programs at the Israeli institutions to the public school system in Chicago. Your concern for others extends to more than 600 institutions annually. While your outreach is broad, your efforts consistently focus on building opportunities for others and addressing the needs of individuals at risk. Through the decades, your family's legacy of commitment to the care of others has been passed on to your children and grandchildren. Today, even the great-grandchildren of Ari and Ida Crown are involved in helping to ensure continuation of the work all four generations have embraced as a core value of your family. We greatly esteem the social contract of engagement, trust, and participation by which you address the need for social change. On behalf of the many individuals and organizations that benefit from your unflagging generosity, we honor the kindness and steadfast commitment of the Crown family. Lester. Ladies and gentlemen, I really commend your endurance. <laughs> we, we really all agree that uh, nobody exemplifies the finer ideals of the American society than Andrew Carnegie. He was born in relative poverty. He epitomized the Horatio Alger pragmatist of uh, rags to riches through, through diligence, hard work, and humility. And he espoused and practiced unbelievable generosity because he believed, and correctly so, that private wealth had an obligation to serve the public good. So really for our family to bask in the glow of uh, his life 
is a humbling experience indeed. <clears throat> I don't believe there's any recognition that my dad and, he, and his brothers or my brothers uh, could receive that they would have appreciated more. They, they all felt from written time that privilege and good fortune of living here in the United States during some of its most productive years obligated all of us to give back to society. And this was the core of their values, all their lives during their entire life, not just in words, but in deeds. They practiced this outlook from day one, and they did it in no uncertain terms. They told their children and their grandchildren. So three generations have really done their best to remain true to those convictions which mirrored the outlook of uh, Andrew Carnegie. I'm thrilled to be here today, obviously, to uh, really be the designated hitter for a large family, <clears throat> and we'll never forget today. And since each and every one of them really ha has a part of this medal, I'd like my wife Renee and the squad that we brought to stand up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that just happens to represent five members of the second generation, 24 members of the third, 48 members of the fourth, and one member of the fifth who was five weeks old and decided not to travel. <laughs> we really will never forget today, and we're unbelievably grateful to Varden and to Bill Thompson and to the she Carnegie Committee for this wonderful, wonderful recognition and for their vote of confidence. Thank you all for being here today with us. Thank you, Lester Crown, for embodying generations, literally, of generosity. And what, a, what an amazing example that family has set and continues to set.